Hello, this is Muho from Osaka and today I want to get to the third and last question that I got from Egypt. The first question was, hmm, how do you, I get rid of suffering? Um, maybe I should change my life, but I'm not quite sure how I can do that. I see that masters like Kodo Sawaki or Kosho Uchiyama did it, but I have the feeling I can't cope that with that kind of life. On the other hand, I won't, don't want to be a slave to my desires anymore. Uh, I talked about that question two weeks ago, and last week it was about how Zen deals with dit distinctions. Uh, in Zen it's often said that hmm, you shouldn't make distinctions. On the other hand, in real life, you must make distinctions from time to time. And even in a Zen monastery, uh, the cook will take a good look at the stuff that he's using for cooking and decide, is this still edible or should it maybe go into the garbage? Uh, he doesn't want to waste stuff, but there's a distinction between Miso and kuso, as you say in Japanese. Uh, miso paste for making soup and shit that goes into the toilet. And now the third question. The third question relates to the first one. I have never experienced Zazen in a retreat setting where I would spend days doing nothing but Zazen. And I think that this affects my idea of Zen practice. I would spend days doing nothing but Zazen. And I think that this... Uh, sorry. Mm, the third question relates to the first one. I start once more. I've never experienced Zazen in a retreat setting where I would spend days doing nothing but Zazen. And I think that this affects my idea of Zen practice. It seems that retreats exist for some reason to deepen the practice. Yet also I read that Zazen is good for nothing. That's something that uh, Kodo Sawaki loved to say when people asked him, what is it good for? What can I expect from my practice? He would say, oh, it's good for nothing. Uh, if you practice Zazen for 30 years and you're 20 now, in 30 years you're going to be 50 and that's it. So uh, you read that Zazen is good for nothing, Zazen never becomes something, something special and that the beginner Zazen is just like that of the masters. I guess this question also relates to making distinctions. Is Zazen something that develops? Or is it something that has to be grasped at once? Or is it both? Again, thank you very much for what you provide us with. It is for me like the only source of light in the darkness of my mind. So, uh, first of all, thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, giving me these questions. Um, how does a beginner's Zazen differ from that who's been sitting for 10, 20, maybe even 30 years. Is there a difference at all? Or is there none? If there's none, why would, for example, Uchiyama say in the seven points of practice that you can also find at the Antaji homepage, you will find some texts by uh, so Kodo Sawaki and uh, Kosho Uchiyama. And these seven points for practice, uh, that's something that uh, Uchiyama said in his last talk in Antaiji. Something similar you will also find in a text that is also available at the Antaiji website, which is called To You, who has decided to become a monk, uh, where he's also talking about how you can find a teacher and why it's important to find a teacher and how you should relate to that teacher and why you could also say that the only true teacher is Zazen. In that text he also says something similar which is 
Uh, first, you should sit silently for 10 years. And then after 10 years, you should sit for another 10 years. And when you've said 20 years, sit for another 10 years, 30 years. And if Zazen is always the same, why would you need to sit 30 years? That would be mm, one question. If there's no development, why would Uchiyama insist on sitting for 30 years? On the other hand, if there's some kind of development, why would Uchiyama's teacher, Sawaki, say Zazen is good for nothing? And if it's really good for nothing, why sit in the first place? <clears throat> um, the answer to that question I already gave some time ago in a different video, video but the, the short answer is uh, it's important to practice Zazen that's good for nothing because otherwise you will always keep chasing this carrot. I want to get enlightened, I want to be a happier person, I want to get uh, into Nirvana so that I will be liberated from suffering. Exactly that attitude makes you stuck in samsara. Unless you don't change that attitude, you're never gonna reach nirvana. And when you just sit without the intention to get anything, and you continue that practice from day to day, eventually for a decade, two, three, um, of course things will change. I mean, of course things will change. But then if uh, you tell a beginner, if you do this for 30 years, your life will gonna change. That's gonna, not gonna work well, because that beginner will always be sitting with this attitude, well, my life is miserable now, maybe next year it's gonna be better, and then in two years, three years. You're never gonna be right here now. You're never gonna let Zazen do Zazen. And that's the important, important point. You don't use Zazen to be a better person or a happier person tomorrow, but rather you let Zazen manifest as Zazen. So if a beginner sits for the first time without expecting anything, in a way you could say that's the best Zazen that's possible. And often, when we sit for a decade or two, the Zen becomes a routine, and actually we wish we would, could return to that beginner's Zen. It's not that beginner's Zen is worth less than a master's Zen. Often, a beginner's Zen is much more pure. It's your first time. You don't know anything, but you're still curious. And after a decade or two, you have to, you have somehow, how do you say, <clears throat> arranged yourself uh, with this idea, well, it's supposed to be good for nothing and my life is still as miserable as it used to be, maybe that's just how it is. You lose the curiosity, you lose that beginner's mind. But then on the other hand, that's something that Dogen Zenji writes in a chapter that's called Hotsubo Daishin, Arousing Body Mind. And he says that, well, body mind, it's the same for a beginner and for a club completely enlightened Buddha. But at the same time, it's different. It's the same and it's different. It's both. Um, it's the same in so far as there's only one fire. Fire is fire. But then if you compare the spark flying from a match and Dogen Zenji uses the example of this universe at the end when it's kind of imploding um, everything everything is gonna be on fire. It's gonna be the big inferno at the end of the universe everything is going to be fire. If you compare the whole universe burning to one spark flying from a match, the difference is huge. But actually, the spark flying from one match can cause 
a house to burn, it can cause a city to burn, it can cause the whole universe to burn. So your Zazen right now can change the whole world. And if you stop comparing, your Zazen now is the only Zazen possible. So be, may you be a beginner or may you be a veteran. Your Zazen today is the only Zazen that counts. And if you sit each day with that attitude, mm. you might realize in 30 years that mm. your life has changed although nothing has changed at all. 20 year old has become 50, mm. but you don't regret a minute of these 30 years. And maybe that's thanks to Zazen. Who knows? Okay, thank you for these questions. See you again and thank you for watching.